Hello and welcome back to the um, video tutorials for Mr. Billingham's BC Calculus class. Today we continue into some of the material that has been left off this year's AP exam. So this will not be on the AP exam, but this is calculus. You would normally cover it in the uh, typical scope of uh, an, an AP class during the year, and it would be useful to know as you go forward into you know advanced math and science classes. So um, this is vector calculus, the calculus part. In my mind, it's a great deal like um, parametric equations, but you can make your own decision. So here's our first problem. So you'll notice that they say particles moving in the plane, its position at given at any time t greater than or equal to zero by kind of the coordinate pair sine of t, t squared over 2. So the x value is always given by sine of t and the y value is always given by t squared over 2. So maybe you can see now why I say this is just like parametric calculus or parametric math. So answering A is incredibly simple. All I have to do is write the following. That's right. All I did was change left parenthesis and right parenthesis to less than and greater than and turned it from a sort of point form, a component form, into a vector form. B is not really that much harder because velocity is the derivative of position. That was easy. And now the acceleration. Well, acceleration, once again, is a vector quantity. Now, D is a little bit um, interesting because it's somewhat open-ended, but I'll try to answer it the best I can by giving the position, the velocity, and the um, motion. So I guess we could say that the particles at the position sine 6, 18, with a velocity of cosine 6, 6, and an acceleration of negative sine 6, 1, which means I'm at about negative a quarter 18, I'm moving right with a velocity of about one unit per second and up with a velocity of about six units per second. And my acceleration is 0.281. So I'm actually speeding up a little bit in both up and right directions. If you go into Desmos and define um, the point very much like they did, so sine t, t squared over 2 is kind of an ordered pair, and you create a slider for t, and I would suggest uh, 0 to 2 pi, you can animate it, and you can watch this point fly around in space. The graph's going to look something like that. You can see in the graph that it's kind of moving right and left and right sinusoidally, but it's accelerating in the vertical direction, which is what the t squared over 2 is doing. So now let's formally introduce velocity, speed, acceleration, and direction of motion from the vector calculus perspective. Most of this is really obvious. We just used it. The position vector, of course, is just x of t, y of t. The velocity vector is x prime of t, or dx dt, comma y prime of t, or dy dt. The acceleration vector is the second derivative of x with respect to t and the second derivative of y with respect to t. And they introduce this term that I've never seen on an AP test. They talk about direction of motion, and they call it the direction vector. Really, it's just the unit vector in the velocity direction. Okay, let's work into the problem. Probably done a problem like this in uh, physics before. We want to split the uh, velocity of this, or the position and velocity of this um, fly ball in terms of the x and the y component. The x component, we're going to ignore air friction, so the x component is just increasing steadily at uh, the, the rate that it, horizontal rate that it leaves the bat. The y component is a little bit trickier because we have to add in the piece that's due to gravity, and since we're in feet and seconds, it's going to be this. So there's the position vector of the baseball in t seconds. A velocity vector should be a piece of cake right now. We just, we just uh, differentiate the x and y components separately. Uh, when does the um, fielder catch the ball, and how far is he from the home plate? Well, to do this, we know he catches it at a vertical reach of 8 feet, so let's set the, uh, the y component to 8 feet. So we get... Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can solve this and get 
So we find that he catches the ball about 5.869 seconds after it was hit to find out how much it traveled during this that time, just multiply that by 55. So the fielder is 322.78 feet from the uh, where the batter hit the ball. Now, how fast is the ball? Well, that's speed, and speed is the magnitude of the vector. So to find speed, I use the following. So it was traveling, the ball was traveling about 73.4 miles per hour when the uh, fielder caught it. All right, that's a pretty good introduction to a nice example of uh, so-called vector calculus. You'll notice it really is very much like parametric motion. Here's a nice little way to think about um, the effect of gravity on the vertical velocity over time by looking at it as a vector. So we can think of the non-gravity piece of the velocity as being the vector 55t, 55 root 3t, and the vertical piece of the, um, the gravity piece of the vector as being g of t, 0, negative 16t squared, and if we add those together we get the same expression that we had for the velocity um, in vector format. So that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. So here we're going to look at some uh, motion of a particle in the plane and um, should be pretty straightforward. Using our knowledge of um, derivatives we can get the velocity vector and acceleration vector pretty easily. To get a look at the path of the particle you probably want to either um, do this in Desmos uh, again, by graphing this, I would imagine if you let t be between 0 and 2 pi, you'd see the full thing. If you want to really see the motion of the particle and not just what the path looks like, uh, make t a, uh, a slider and animate it. But you'll get a shape that looks like this. And here's one more problem. So I'll do the work for each of these. First I'll find the velocity vector. Feels very much like the preceding problem. Now I'll do the calculation for part B, finding velocity, acceleration, speed, and direction of motion at pi over 4. And again, direction of motion is something that I really haven't um, run into on the AP exam. Remember, speed is just the magnitude of the velocity vector. So the speed, which is a scalar, is the square root of 10. To get the uh, sketch, um, we can do it several different ways, uh, Desmos or a graphing calculator or just plugging in points. But notice that the x values are going to get as, well, I'll make a table. So we start at 0, 2, and I'm going to do this in blue. We start at 0, 2, and then we go to 4, 0. And then we go to 0, negative 2, and then negative 4, 0, and then finally back to 0, 2. So we go around it clockwise. 4, 0 is when the uh, particle is at t equals pi over 2, as we can see from our table. So um, let's calculate the velocity at uh, pi over 2. Now, as a located vector, 0, negative 2 would actually be right here. But to show that at the point 4, 0, I'm just going to put it there. And that gives you the indication that as it hooks around that right corner, it's heading straight down with a velocity of 2 units per second. And that confirms what we already knew, that it's traveling around clockwise. The next topic we're going to cover is displacement and distance traveled. Recall that when a particle moves along a line with a velocity v of t, the displacement, or net distance traveled from a to b, is given by the integral from a to b of v of t. And so if you went 3 feet to the right for 2 seconds, 3 feet to the left for 2 seconds, your displacement would be 0. The integral would come out to 0. If I want to get the total distance traveled, I use something slightly different. In this case, I integrate the absolute value of the velocity. And so moving to the right at 3 feet per second for 2 seconds and then left 3 feet per second for 2 seconds, that would give me a total distance traveled of 12 feet, even though my displacement is 0. So with 
a velocity and position and acceleration done in vectors, we have to do things pretty similarly, but slightly differently. And here's what we get. So displacement is just going to be um, that vector, and that will be total change in x and total change in y, sort of paralleling what we were just doing above. But distance traveled is exactly like it was for curve length in parametric motion. It's square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared, which here is velocity 1 squared plus velocity 2 squared, the component squared, which makes sense because the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared is the speed. And distance traveled, it makes sense, would be speed integrated over time. So let's work an example. So this is kind of an initial value problem. We know the initial position of the particle, and we know the velocity vector. So how would I get the position of the particle at t equals 4? Well, this should make sense. So to get the x-coordinate of my position, it's just the initial x-coordinate plus the displacement. And the y-coordinate is the initial y-coordinate plus the y-displacement. And these are integrals we could do ourselves, but it seems to me a good time to use a calculator, and here's the answers we'd get. Uh, since the particle started at 1,5 and wound up at 9,21, we can get the displacement. And to get total distance traveled from 0 to 4, we would use the following. Again, I'm integrating the velocity's magnitude, which is integrating the speed. And with a calculator, this comes out to about 33.5 three three units and that's the distance traveled so not not too tricky um, pretty straightforward once you get it and hang on for another problem and I'll provide a meme so we're looking at the previous um, problem again and now I want to get the path of the particle and so I need to get the position vector and I can do that because it's initial value problem. I have the x velocity and the initial x. I have the y velocity and the initial y. So I just want to integrate those, and I'll get as follows. Don't forget the plus c. So let's use the fact that x of 0 is 1 to calculate c. Now I'm going to do something similar with uh, the y coordinate. Using y of 0 equals 5, we get um, y of 0 equals 0 squared plus cosine of pi times 0 plus c must equal 5. So 0 plus 1 plus c is 5, so c is 4. So now I'm in a position to write my position function. They've been calling this r of t, which I haven't seen before. Now we can either use the graphing calculator in parametric mode or Desmos to get a look at the graph, and here's what it looks like. So kind of a cool shape. Um, and if you did it in Desmos and let T be a tracer, then you could, or a slider, then you can animate and you could actually watch the particle moving through the air along that path. And you'd be able to calculate things like how far totally did it travel, and what's the displacement, and everything else we've been working on in this section. So I hope this um, concludes for you the cal vector calculus, which in my mind is really incredibly similar to parametric motion calculus. Um, again, not covered on the AP this year, but worth doing. And for your patience, here's a meme. This seemed an appropriate uh, meme, considering that we were using plus C in this very tutorial. So thanks again to the meme guys, Michael Kaufman, Luke Arambidi, Ryan Brown, and Marshall Mann. Appreciate your efforts, guys. It's making this more fun for me, and I hope for the viewers. All right, stay well. Uh, we have like one last video, might get split in two to do, uh, and that's the calculus of polar functions. The integration part's pretty easy. Surprisingly, the differentiation part is the annoying part. And that really concludes the content for the year as soon as I get through that. So stay healthy. Um, Please drop in on Tuesdays and Fridays when I have the scheduled uh, class meetings if you want to. Um, bring your AP problems, and bye-bye.